Hello everyone. This is Lori Mueller coming to you on Sunday, September 5th from Lincoln, Nebraska. I'm a Stampin' Up! demonstrator that is very, very passionate about crafting, paper crafting, making cards, you name it. Anything that I can keep my hands busy with and I love to share and I have a great, great project to share with you. And I am so, oh my gosh, hi Marianne, hi Susan. So thank you for coming to visit with me and spending part of your Sunday afternoon with me. It's another session of Sunday Stampin' Dreams and I've had these visions in my head using a new product in the mini catalog, the July through December mini catalog, and they're called Tombstone Treat Boxes, and they are super adorable. I've seen a couple of different uh, examples online, but I have a number of teachers that I want to gift something to because they've um, been, you know, it's only three weeks in, but they've been super busy with their uh, little kiddos and um, everything that goes on. And thank heavens, this is a long weekend, Labor Day weekend. So for those of you that are in the U.S., that's where I'm at, Lincoln, Nebraska in the United States. Happy Labor Day weekend. Uh, we have some, um, we're going to get the smoker out and do some pork butt and have some potato salad, all that good fixing. So I am um, anxious for some, I mean, I do a lot of home cooking anyway, but it's kind of nice to have um, my chillins around, my, my girls and their other halves with us and we're just gonna eat some great food. So I am super excited. Hi Linda, hi Shirley. Oh Mary, how are you everyone? Um, yes, Halloween is just around the corner, uh, just next month. And before you know it, it'll be here and it might catch you in a whirlwind if you're not prepared. So I'm going to help you get set up to do those little extra special gifts for your recipients, whether they're co-workers, your boss, um, your book club members, your best, best of friends. Uh, but these are super, super cute, and it's going to have a little candy inside, so you can choose your candy of, of choice, or um, you can mimic what uh, candy choice I have chosen. You know, uh, I was through Sam's the other day, and they had their humongous bags of candy. Uh, they're on a, uh, they've got an instant coupon applied to each one of those, and uh, they have a mix of uh, Three Musketeers and Twix and Reese's and you name it, just a small variety or in a variety of different types of candies in each bag. And so, of course, you know, we get quite a few kiddos through our neighborhood, so one big bag is um, sufficient for the entire evening. But I am featuring the Tombstone Treat Boxes and also the Frightfully, Frightfully Cute Bundle. You can find the tombstone uh, treat boxes on page 51 of the mini catalog and then the stamp set and the dies bundle on page 52 of the catalog. So I, um, I think I've got a really cute one. I hope you think so too and I am anxious to share. So just one little plug about celebration. We've only got four more weeks of celebration and that's where with every $50 purchase you place in my online store, you get to choose an, a selection of either stamps, papers, um, or depending on if your order is $100, we have a couple of items that Fit that category. You can get um, one item that is uh, applicable to your $100 order. Otherwise, others are at the $50 range. So you can mix and match as well. So if you spend $100, you can get two 50s, or if you spend $100, you can get one of the $100 uh, selections. So I um, I know this bundle is um, around $41, and then if you wanted to get the designer series paper, you'll hit your $50 mark, and then you can choose something free at a celebration. So it is 
a win-win for everyone uh, that you get a nice little gift along with your purchase so all right we are going to get started on our frightfully cute tombstone treat box so come along with me all right so let's get a setup here and I hope um, everyone is ready for Halloween if not, hopefully you will be really soon. All right, let me get my lighting all adjusted. All right, so the bundle that I was mentioning is the Frightfully Cute. And there's a couple of different smaller images that are great for inking up in black. Um, you know, you can't go wrong with black as long as it's with Halloween, right? Um, and then there's a, a number of really cute sentiments that um, are cute and witty. Uh, or um, you can create little tags. They have a to and from. So you can create tags and then have your front of your tag all decorated up. We are going to focus on this frightfully cute, you know, same as what the stamp set is. It is a rubber mount stamp set and clings to our uh, clear blocks. And then there's this really adorable die set that, you know, there's a few things that coordinate with the images here, maybe just one actually, but uh, or two. This one will fit this sentiment or that one as well. And then you have these um, tags they're basically like a tag that you can ink up your sentiment and situate with your with this particular one as well. So there's a number of ways that you can use these dies, those particular three, either as a solo accent or um, coordinating with the sentiments and one of the images here. The other product that I'm going to be using are the is the black glitter paper which is this right here um, super super cute and it is a, a lighter weight glitter paper and it's black on the back side as well so it doesn't have that filmy feel so it die cuts really nice and crisp and clean and uh, you don't have to worry about uh, any of these dies getting stuck or not die cutting all the way through so this cobweb is very intricate and slices through that paper very very nicely as well as you know a gate you know your fenced gate that we're going to be using today so we'll be using that one and then um, you know if you wanted a glittery witch's hat you know how pretty is that as well so we'll be focusing on that paper and then we're going to be focusing on the or using the cute Halloween designer series paper and uh, this is going to be used for our candies which I'll show you in just a minute so here's five of the patterns there's actually six let's see there's um, there's quite a number in here let me situate this and so we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight different patterns that are two-sided. Or, and so those are the back sides and the front of your patterns. Adorable, adorable. And this little bat right there, oh my gosh, so stinking cute. And then we got this one. And then we have our skeletons with kind of a striped background. We have our haunted houses with you know some little ghosts and skeletons and bats. And then we have a fun little pattern of uh, flirty flamingo, um, old olive, pumpkin pie, and some black in there. And then these are little squiggles on the back side of that designer paper. So really fun designer series paper. And I'm gonna be using these for our little candies. And so that is our um, bundle that we're working with. Now to show off our little project, here is our treat box. And 
the lid so these two work together and on the inside I have decorated some Twix so Twix candy bars that I have wrapped with our designer series paper and I can get five to fit on their side in here and it's a great way to show off these really cute uh, designer papers the patterns and when you're doing this you want to be conscientious of how you're cutting your designer paper so I always say to measure twice cut once right and um, you know if you want your booze to be readable through the window so that's another fun thing that I have done is I've created a window through here using this particular die and so I'll show you how I did that as well super cute and then I used our playful alphabet to you know create a rest in peace and then I'm going to show you a fun sponging technique on this particular to kind of give it a you know an orangey you know scary spooky hue to it um, and then I used a couple different fences and um, this coloring right here is our fun gingham black and white gingham but this has got a little orange to it so I'll show you how I did that as well but very adorable and the one fits right over top of the other and makes a wonderful solid I mean it's really nice and heavy duty I love um, how solid this is but it's a great little gift and then to accent the top are the uh, cute stars they're self-adhesive um, accessorizing the rest of the uh, grouping here so they have kind of like an iridescent so they can be kind of an orangey look to pull that out or clear or even a little bit of green to pull out the old olive so super cute love it love it all right so let's get started so as I had mentioned we have these new tombstone treat boxes in our mini catalog and you have to be really careful um, because I did not pull the whole package out of this cardboard setting I just pulled the top two well as you can imagine <laughs> I wasn't paying attention so I'm going to share this little tip of the mistake I made since I pulled two of the top ones they're both the same size but these back ones are just a little bit bigger which means that this is the top and this is the bottom because if you want the one to overlay you know and uh, go over top of this area you know this little box you have to have one that's larger than the other right so that was my little lesson learned is that you need one of each of these from this package and when you pull them out of your package you're going to see you know one is a little bit bigger than the other all right so that's my first lesson that i learned about so i'm going to pull my I'm going to go ahead and assemble the small that which is the bottom layer of this and they already have the score lines added to our box so I'm just going to go ahead and kind of burnish I'm not using a bone folder but you could um, and get everything put together they even come with an adhesive strip on either end as well so I'm going to go ahead and remove my adhesive strip on each end and these are so super easy to put together so you want to first bring these two up fold in these two flaps and bring up the bottom layer and I want to make certain that my edges are flush with the edge of this bottom part and I, what I do is I push it together and then just fold that down and voila very easy to put those together and they go I mean it just takes a not even barely a split second to put them together and then that's the bottom of our box already all right so I can set that aside the next thing I want to do is to create my little window that I have done right here 
And how I did that is I used this particular die. And like I said, you can use this for your sentiment, but I'm gonna use it as a little window because I wanted to see some of the pretty designer series papers that came out of that. And how I calculated that I was in the center of my box, because it's easier to do it this way, of course, right? But I wanted the stitching that is on this die to come out on the gray side, on the basic gray side, because it's real easy to see all my borders here and to be able to center it. But I wanna have my stitching on this side. And now this side, you know, the left and right are very easy to identify if I'm centered or not. But the top part, I have to go with these score lines of my tabs. And I'm just gonna use this as a reference to put across. So if you have a ruler or a piece of cardstock strip like this, then it can help me um, pinpoint my center of my box lid. And I'm gonna shift this over here, and that looks about good. So I'm gonna put my, got a little bit of washi tape to hold that together. And then I'm gonna run this through my stamp and cut and emboss machine. All right, so I'll pick that up and I'll lay this in here. Now you will feel a little bit more resistance when you're passing this through simply because we're working with extra layers of um, cardstock. This, the one layer is kind of thick by itself, but then this piece on top of it is another added thickness. So. Um, don't worry, you'll be able to get it through. Just know that it will take a little bit extra um, muscle to run it through. But and I'm just gonna go to the end of that die and come on back, just so I give it two passings through. All right, and then you can see how it has die cut all the way through, and I can just punch that out and get my washi tape to come off of there. There we go. And then the fun part, when you get this out of here, this can be used as a label on another tag or a card or whatever. And it's got some great thickness, so it almost gives you a 3D effect, but I love the pillowing uh, markings with the stitched look that is around it. But And also too, you get this texture look from, um, that comes along with it. So super adorable. So hang on to that piece. Don't let it go. All right, and that's our beginning. Now I'm going to also bring in our other items that we want to die cut while I've got my machine up here. So I need two of the fences and I'm, I'm gonna put as many on here as possible. I need a circle the, with my flirty flamingo. All right, so I'm gonna put that in there. I need um, a tree branch. Let's see, I can put that in here. Put that right there. The one thing about this stamp and cut and machine, emboss machine is the bed is of a really great size to be able to die cut multiple items all at once. And then I need my little owl. So I'll put him there in the corner. And I think that's it. Now I can rest my top plate. Because I'm, oops, I'm gonna need another fencing, but I'll do that when I emboss my sentiment so I can run that through at the same time as embossing my sentiment. All right, let's run this through. All right. All right. So we've got our little owl, and he's out of gray granite. And we've got a flirty flamingo moon. And put my 
out of the way before I lose it. And I'm going to need another fencing, but like I said, I'll die cut it when um, I do my sentiment. And just make certain these don't get hooked on each other. And then I'll punch out all my pieces here. I did forget my little brush. There we go. So easy to pop these out. And this glitter, it does not shed. So you could wipe this all over your body if you wanted. And you're not going to shine in the dark. <laughs> so, all right. Got that. And our little tree. Super cute. Right there. All right. Those aside and there we go. All right, that's all cleaned up. So we have the beginnings of our next section. All right, now what we want to do is to cover up this hole of our lid, right? So we will take some window sheet, and I cut this at three and a half, or three and a quarter by two and a quarter, I believe. I did forget to, yeah, two and a quarter by three and a quarter. And I did write down all of the different supplies that I have used in my project so those are the colors I used and the accessories uh, and I didn't write the measurements of my cardstock simply because a lot of it is so tiny you can just use scraps um, now with the exception of this is new paper in our mini catalog uh, you can um, you know cut a strip and be able to go from there now the window sheet is going to cover this hole right here so what I'm going to do is take the uh, tear and tape and add this to my window sheet. And this will be, this is very much recommended over stamp and seal, definitely not liquid glue because um, it'll take forever to dry. But this tear and tape is quick and easy clean and simple and because our tear and tape is a little bit wider than um, the areas that I'm uh, trying to go on the side here I should have cut my piece just a little bit wider um, at the time I wasn't there we go we can add some tear and tape there and and you can you know it it is by the name you can tear this I um, have a tendency to use my scissors for a lot of things All right there we go so now you want to burnish this it's easier to peel this paper off once you've burnished it there we go And all right, now we will center this over top of our open area like that. And there you go. Now nothing will come on through. So we can go ahead and assemble this piece. Do all your folds on the burnish or on the score lines. And like I said, you could use your bone folder if you wanted to burnish them a lot better. Um, but I didn't find that to be a, necess uh, a necessity. All right, so again, you bring in the two side tabs and you bring up the bottom and tuck it in like that and do the same thing just like that. 
and then that adhesive holds on to those tabs that you've put in. And then this is gonna go on top of our box, just like this, okay? So let's, um, let's see, let's go ahead and decorate our box first. And we're gonna need our tree. Um, well, you know, we need our sentiment. So I need another die cut of the uh, fencing. So let's go ahead and do that first. I have a strip of old olive. I am going to emboss a little bit with my embossing buddy. I have Versamark and our Frightfully Cute. And I don't know, this seems to be my go-to thing if I want to gauge you know, where I'm putting my sentiment. And I'll ink that up with Versamark and stamp that right in there. And I'm gonna bring in my embossing powder and get really liberal. Don't be shy with putting the powder on there because you can shake off all of the excess like that. All right, cute, frightfully cute. Now I'm gonna bring in my heat gun, which I'm gonna pre-warm up a little bit and melt that powder that is sitting on there on that Versamark. The Versamark is tacky enough that it holds the powder in place and then the heat tool will melt it and give you a nice little raised area like that. Isn't that fun? Love, love, love. So now we can bring in our Stampin' Cut and Emboss machine. And we're gonna die cut this piece out as well as another fence post or gate, however you wanna reference it. And I think I got that. That in and let's see did I put my there was our die and I'll put that there die cut these together come on back You know, Halloween, I don't know, is Halloween a favorite holiday of yours or is it one that you like to decorate for? Um, mainly I like to, Halloween, I don't do a whole lot of decorating, but I do make a lot of treat packages. That's primarily why, or my main feature for Halloween is to make treat packages. Um, I don't, I do make cards, but um, I don't know, treat packages is my favorite. All right, so let's get these poked out of here real quick. And then, voila, there we go. Okay, just put that off to the side. Now we can focus on putting this part together and we're going to do the center part first and then I'll show you how to do the rest in piece um, up above. Now because this is so see-throughy, this is our metallic mesh ribbon, I um, didn't have something that's going to cover both sides to hold it in place. So the um, mechanics of it are to a lot of you see me do this a lot with my finger. I just do this number. I'm just gonna put a little tackiness and lay this across like that. And there we go. And that will hold in place. And then you go in wash your finger <laughs> or if you have a little wet one or something like that all right next we will add our tree in 
when we start arranging. So I'm gonna use liquid glue for my adhesive on these pieces. So I'm gonna tuck that in there. And then we'll add our fencing. And it's a good thing that there's two sizable sections of this. You could use our adhesive sheets that um, you can die cut when you, you know, you adhere this to the adhesive sheets and then die cut it all together. Now the window sheet's going to take a little bit for it to hold on to, but it will stick to the, the box side fairly quickly. And do that. But the adhesive sheets, sometimes, I don't know, I, I know that they're there. I don't use them as often, but I probably should have used it on this little project. And I want to make certain I have my fencing level on the bottom. Although, <laughs> I don't know how much fencing can be looked at as level. I did a lot of it on the farm as a kid, had to always fix fence posts when um, the cows got out or you know the storm knocked over a wooden post or something of that nature. All right, so we're coming together. We have that part. Now we have our little owl and I am only going to put a dimensional on this side. So I'm going to use one of our mini black embossing or um, uh, dimensional, <laughs> the mini black dimensional. And I'm gonna put him as if he's up on this limb right here. There we go. All right, now to take our ribbon and what I have done is I'm going to just wrap it around here, but I want to add a little bit of color to it, all right? Because I'm going to be adding some pumpkin and some black to our little moon, and I'll show you that in a minute. And I am going to use coloring with our light pumpkin Stampin' Blend, and I'm going to use the marker end. And I'm just going to, I should have, let me do it this way. You can just go along like that and add color to this gingham. Super, super cool. You can do whatever color you want to make your gingham the color that you want. And once it dries, I will be able to put a, yeah, that's getting pretty, there we go. I'll use a glue dot on each end. Oop, there we go. Oh. And I think I'm going to put one in the center. Oh, no, I won't need to because my sentiment's going to hold it in place. All right. So, oops, sticking to my finger more than it is the ribbon. All right, I'm going to go right along this bottom edge here and just tuck it behind there and do the same with that. So it kind of gives it a little band of sorts. I think my ribbon is still a little wet from the coloring and we will put our sentiment we'll pop that up over top and i'm using the mini blacks dimensionals because i'm using a dark on dark you know i've got my old olive and it's going on to this basic gray layer so these black dimensionals um, won't be as obvious when somebody is looking at the box and all the decorations on it add in my sentiment over top, centering it across my ribbon, like that. 
super cute, right? Oh, oh, oh. All right, now we have our moon that we need to add. So we're going to bring in, um, I've got a piece of scrap paper here, and this is Flirty Flamingo, but I'm going to show you how to add a little bit of color with our pumpkin pie and our memento using our sponge daubers. And when you go to add this ink, you don't wanna go directly from the ink pad to your surface here because it'll be a little bit too bold. So you, cause you can always add more ink and I'm just going to rub it in on the edges like this. Kind of, kind of tone down that pinkish hue but um, I'm visioning a like the blood red moon, uh, which I happened to see the other morning on my way to work. It was so gorgeous. <clears throat> All right, now I'm gonna bring in a little bit of our black and let's see if I have enough. So I'm gonna add a little bit. And again, I'm gonna do like I've done with the pumpkin and add in some black on the edges just to kind of tone down the pinks and oranges on here and then if you had struck it a little bit too much with too much black you can always come back in and tone it down with some more pumpkin until you get the hue that you really want with that shadowing of the moon like that isn't that cool and then I'll just kind of do this, add a little bit more, kind of blend your colors in a little bit. And there we have our blood red moon. All right, put those away. Now the last part is to die cut our rest in peace. All right, and how I did that, I have an adhesive sheet that I have cut down to the size that I need for my playful alphabet letters. So I will peel one side like that and I'll bring my cardstock in and line it up over top like that. And then I'm gonna bring in the rest in peace from my alphabet letters right there and die cut in the machine again. And you would not think that these tiny alphabet letters are gonna die cut through that adhesive, but it's crazy incredible because it squishes. So that kind of helps. All right, hold that in place and I'm gonna run it through you can kind of hear the cracking and then back out. There we go. And then it should just, yep, pop out just like that. Ooh, ooh. So that's one thing you have to be careful of. If you're not ready to plant your letters down, you want to make certain that the backing comes with it <laughs> so you don't so it doesn't stick to something else before you're ready. So I kind of use my finger to push it out because one side wants to peel out or peel off already. Okay. And that's just the paper, the adhesive backing. All right. There we go. And there we have our rest in peace. And we can adhere this to our blood moon. And I'm going to center my eye first so then I know where my other letters are gonna go. Just makes it easy for application. I'm using my take your pick tool to help me with positioning. I love this thing. It's so helpful to just kind of tack it on there or if I can, let's see if I can do this. There we go. 
like that. And there we have it. And last but not least, we will add some Stampin' Dimensionals to the back. And tack it onto our box lid. Ah, these are not coming off very easy today. And I'm just centering it at the top, giving myself a little bit of a border. Whoops. Like that. Okay, I think. And then the last part is to, um, well, the next part, we need to add our candy. So I've got my Twix candies and my designer papers. And these measure, I think they are one and a half by three and a half. And I'm going to flip them over and add my tear and tape to the top sections of it. All right, so I'm gonna run this through for all of them. Because I wanna make certain that there's no um, hanging edges that are gonna catch on something. So I'll show you in a second here what I'm mentioning. I, I'm not adhering this to the candy wrapper by any means. I am just, this will be adhering to itself, the designer paper. And last one. So you can see the back sides. A lot of it is black and white, and then all of the color is on the front of the designer paper. Uh, with the exception of this one. I'm going to use the black side of it. Otherwise, these are the back sides, and then this is the colorful side. But it didn't have much of an image for me, so I went uh, with the black side. So I'm going to peel off, whoop, again, and let's see, I want this, just wrap it over and give it a nice snug squeeze and line it up. So that way my adhesive is on this side and it's not gapping. Otherwise, you know, if I went this, sometime, you know, you would have a little overhang and it wouldn't, um, it, it wouldn't look very good adhered. All right, so I'm gonna finish out these, the rest of them. I'm gonna keep them all the same direction as well. And give it a squeeze, line it up like that. Super cute. And you can do this with, um, you know, Hershey's Nuggets. I think six Hershey's Nuggets actually fit in this box as well. So you could dress up your Hershey's Nuggets with some designer paper. Uh, Ghirardelli Chocolates will fit in there. Um, I don't know how many of those yet. I haven't tried that out yet. But, all right, get that flush like that. And our last one. So you go through quite a bit of tear and tape, but it's such an easy, easy adhesive and um, has a great hold. So you don't have to fear it coming apart. All right, now you just line these up the way you want. And putting that, we'll get our little houses in that direction. Do a little striped, and then our boo at the bottom. And voila, we have our box lid resting nicely over the bottom. And the last part is to add in some of our adhesive stars, these cute little stars. So I'm just gonna put one. Let's see, we'll Give it a different angle then. And then we'll put one over here. And that, my friends, is our cute, frightfully cute 
treat box. Super cute. What do you think? So this is a great time to get a hold of some of these, you know, packages of these boxes. Um, I believe they run, um, they are $10 and you get a package of eight. But, you know, the, the decorating is endless. I mean, you can do so much. You don't have to die cut a window if you don't want. You can decorate a little bit with the designer series paper, do any of the die cuts or punching that you want. But they are really durable and will travel well. So if you wanted to mail them to, you know, any of your college students, put one in, you know, um, a teacher's uh, on their desk or you know give it to a co-worker perfect gift and like I said the candy the whatever you put inside is open to whatever you can put a pair of socks in there or um, you know any fun trinkets like that so you want to make certain that uh, if you want to get a hold of this bundle you want to tack on some of the designer series paper to reach your $50 increment and be able to choose any of the celebration selections that are in here. So there's some fun selections and I hate to have you miss out. So, all right, let's uh, flip on oh. over and let me, if you have any questions, please be certain to leave them here and I will um, give you an answer or look it up or, or do whatever, but Otherwise, um, I so appreciate you spending your Sunday afternoon with me, following along. If you see the live, you're with me live right now. But otherwise, if you catch me on the replay, thank you so much for coming by. I appreciate it. I uh, am wanting to make more and more Stampin' Friends and share my passion for what I love to do with you. And I am ready for the long weekend. So I wish you all well. Be safe. Have a great time with family and friends, and I will see you next week. Thank you so much, everyone. Bye.